and this short video will have a look at particularly digital twins of processes and our business process simulation methodology. We'll have a look how the digital twin of your process can help you to analyze that process in forward-looking scenarios, maximize the ROI of your transformation initiatives, and track those initiatives during implementation. We will have a short look at an audit cache process and turn it from a process map into a silico model, and then have a look at our dashboards to analyze, optimize, and track our transformation initiatives. And what you see on the screen now is a simple audit cache process. On the left here, we have new orders coming in, at the moment 10 per day. These are entering a reviewing backlog or queue until an employee has time to check the order. If the order is clean, it goes straight away into a delivery backlog or queue until it is delivered to the customer. And if the order is unclean, they join a cleaning backlog or queue until an employee has time to contact the customers and fix any errors in the order or, or fix any inconsistencies. And what Silico does to quantify and simulate these process maps is adding these backlogs and queues, adding variables, for example, about processing times um, and order reviewers, so for example FTEs or other resources available uh, that determine how quickly things happen in a process, and then adding variables about like allocating to different paths, for example that 80% of our orders are clean and 20% are unclean. And what we can do with this simple initial version of a process, then think about what transformations can we implement to speed things up and making sure that we are delivering more orders to make, for example, our process more resilient to change. And for that we have a second version of our process. First change we want to make to our process is look at what if we have a higher growth rate in orders. So rather than just assuming we have 10 orders every day, we want to have a look at what happens if orders start with 10 but increase by 25% per year. And then we can very quickly see that in our process we have backlogs that are accumulating, so here nearly to 7,000, 4,000 and 900, which means there's orders and things aren't just getting done. Our capacity does not match the demands that we are receiving. So we want to think about how can we make things quicker in our process. And the first change we want to implement or look at is what if we introduce some robotic process automation where rather than orders all going into our review backlog, we have this green scenario where orders or 95% of orders can be reviewed automatically, which means our employees rather than looking at the reviewing backlog and reviewing orders can spend time on cleaning and delivering orders. A second change we want to look at is what happens if rather than having two hours to clean an order and time requirements, we can get this down through robotic process automation to 0.25 orders hours per order. And then obviously we have a combination of the two where we do our reduction in, in the time required to clean an order as well as our robotic process automation here. And the, we're gonna look at the impact of these different things on our dashboards. And here we are on our first dashboard where we want to just have a look at what happens to our as is process in the blue scenario. So if we don't implement any of our transformation initiatives and we can, for example, activate the annual growth rate in orders um, as a variable. And if we dial it back all the way to zero, we can see we have a constant number of orders in the process. Because there's always a fixed number of orders waiting in it, we also have a constant lead time. But then if we increase that back to let's say 25%, we can quickly see that our orders in the process increase over time, particularly because we have an increase in the number in the review backlog. And also we have an increase in the lead time because there's more orders that are yet to be processed before employees can you know, have a look at those new orders that came on any given day. And what that does effectively is on the one hand is causes customer dissatisfaction because they're waiting longer for their orders, but it also delays our revenue because we only get paid once we've delivered an order. And obviously, yeah, we could hire more people and increase how many FTEs we've got available, which increases um, or which, which delays, but our orders in the process sort of starts growing and there's backlogs accumulating. But obviously, that's also going to affect our cost base. So what we really want to have a look at is how do our different transformation initiatives, so automating the reviewing process, um, figuring out a way to reduce the time required to clean our orders, or a combination of the two impact our process and what ROI do they essentially have? And for that, we're gonna have a look in our second process. And we can visualize these different process variants on our second dashboard here, where we've got our base case, blue, where we don't change anything in the process. In green, we've got our initiative regarding automating the reviews. In purple, we have the um, automation that allows a reduced cleaning time. And in orange, we've got both the two transformation initiatives combined. And we can quickly see that 
with just the base values we have in the model, we've got about 6.2 million in revenue over five years from um, if we leave the process as is, but that increases by 1.6 million if we implement our first change with the automatic reviews and actually have a negative impact of our new cleaning system because while it increases revenue uh, by about 1.5, 150k, it also has costs associated with it, which are a quarter of a million pounds. Um, and that doesn't seem to offset um, the increase in the revenues. Yeah. But we can also play around with what happens when we implement these changes at different times. So we can do our, our introduce our automatic reviewing sooner or later, and we can see, well, it is a lot more impactful if we do it sooner, because then we accumulate the benefits of it. Similarly, we can play around with that for the second change, our new cleaning system that would use as the effort required by employees. And we can see there are ways to make it profitable. But even if we were basically to start working on it today, it would only yield a benefit of about 150k, uh, which is, you know, just about 50% of the investment in it over five years. So you might wonder whether that's really worth it. Um, and instead, we could just say, let's just focus on our second, on our first change here, the automated reviewing in green, which is the one we're going to analyze over time on our final dashboard. And on this final dashboard, we basically want to have a think about how can we track the impact of our transformation initiatives? And let's assume we've done our green scenario where we automated reviews. And we're now one year into our simulation on the 1st of January, 2024. And we can see, oh, we've got actual data, for example, coming from an SAP system. That actually shows us we're doing better than we thought we would be. There's an increase in profit here of, you know, a couple of million pounds. So that's quite significant. So our system then allows you to trace back the root causes of why is that happening. And if we, for example, look at backlogs in the process, we can see they're all increased, which seems a bit odd because we have automated parts of it. So surely they should be lower and there's less things waiting for it. So again, having a look at the root causes, we can look at where our assumptions while we were thinking about transformation have gone off track. And we can see we've got a higher than expected order rate, which causes our profit to increase here because we're just simply selling more products. At the same time, we have a lower percentage of orders automatically processed through our RPA system that we've introduced. Instead of them nearly being nearly all, about 95% as a base assumption, actually it's just 65%. And we can implement a scenario with um, essentially a revised forecast of, well, what happens if these two things stay like that over time? It's just our red scenario here, which is exactly the same values as the actuals have here but then we're gonna use that to forecast enough for four years. And we can quickly see, um, actually we're gonna be slightly worse off over time, even though we have a higher order rate due to a higher growth curve. Well, we still have this issue of just 65 rather than 95% of orders can be processed digitally. And that's the main issue here in the long term, which is why we end up with slightly less benefit than we would have realized um, if our base assumptions that we've made for our new reviewing system were held to be true. But then we can activate our base case and see, well, how does this still compare with doing nothing? And we can see, well, we're still significantly better off compared to our base case where we just stuck to the SS process. So this now then allows the transformation team, while they're still changing the process, to react new, to new data and think about, do we want to change the process more or should we just leave the process as it is and just accept that, yeah, we, we were hoping for a bit more KPI improvement, but we're still significantly better than our base case. Thank you very much. And that concludes our short demonstration of how Silico can use existing materials like a process map, can quickly turn them into a Silico model, and then facilitate simulations that you can use to analyze your process as it currently is, what problems might arise in forward-looking scenarios, have a look at what the best possible combinations of transformation initiatives is to implement and optimize their ROI, and then track how, how well your transformation initiatives are actually doing to then react to new information as it emerges and communicate to stakeholders what the final impact of your initiatives will be.